Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for jumping on the Chris Rap 52 Express. Making limited stops. <laughs> That's a joke. But it's a local. We know that. We're stopping everywhere. We're getting off the train. We're looking around. We're exploring. And when I'm doing that, all of a sudden, I come across this pen. It's not a pen BBS pen. It's not from Taiwan. I'm branching out. It's not a vintage pen. But I think this is a pen that I find quite interesting. And I think it's worth looking at it and talking about what it is and why I like it. I saw this auction, so I uh, got the pen. There's not many on eBay. Here's a listing when you do a search. And it does come in two colors. This is the silver trim version, and there's a gold trim version. And basically, I think that's more due to the color of the lacquer that's put on the metal bits. And a little bit of a different colored celluloid middle section. So we're going to let the Buddha go off and do his thing, and we're going to look at the pen. Interesting how the light plays on that lacquer. It actually feels quite good in the hand. Everything's machined very well. It fits very well. You know, you can feel there's a slight difference between these materials, but not significant. And, and I like the minimalistic design. I mean, considering it's called vintage, it, it looks kind of modern. That's a nice, sturdy-looking clip, and it's spring-loaded. So that'll fit well over many types of fabric or pen cases, however you might want to use your clip for. It's a pull-off cap. Decent snap. Not going to accidentally come off, and we'll see a section of the same finish that's on this barrel part outside of the celluloid. And we see what I would call a fairly interesting looking nib. And maybe that's where the vintage comes in, because that's not a nib you see very often. I wouldn't even call it semi-hooded, but it does have that kind of look to it, and it's a plastic feed there that really fills out the nib. So you would think this nib probably would hold ink fairly well and when I did my flushing the flow appeared to be good too. You know the matching elements are pretty good here. So the, as you would expect it posts very securely. And it's, uh, you can feel the weight of the cap but it, it if you were just given this pen without being posted, you would feel that the weight was fine, and if I given you posted, you would also feel the weight was fine. It fits okay in the hand. It's just that that ed edge of being a little bit short in the hand without posting, but it does post well and nicely, and it's not a big change to the balance. It's a cartridge converter, as one would expect. A lot of threads there. And it's a metal section. What I think is nice is the pen's identified by what's written on the top of this section, which is the Fulawin 815. Hopefully it's coming across well. It's not the easiest thing to see with that lacquer coating on it. The other thing I found very nice is there's a metal insert there into this celluloid. They call it celluloid. Whether it's celluloid or acrylic is not important to me. But it does have some nice chatoyancy to it, some nice depth, some interesting combinations of different colors. be nice to see a whole pen made out of this material, but not. But there's a metal insert, so for those that enjoy metal on metal threading, they've taken care of that. Nice converter. The only thing I have to say about fit and finish and everything else is the converter just doesn't feel as snug as you would think it would. It's not particularly loose, but I'm just used to converters that have been fitting very, very nicely, and this one is just a little bit looser than others. 
But all those threads fit together well. The design elements are nice. Inside is a plastic liner, but at the very bottom of that cap is a screw that I think probably holds in the uh, spring-loaded clip. But it's a brass screw, so I don't expect there to be any rusting, and hopefully that'll seal up and keep that nib wet for a period of time. So I don't know what pen I would even compare this to, but we will just show some so you can get an idea of the size. So here are some pens I chose to compare it to. This is your 78G, and I know it's not officially a 78G, but it's exactly the same size. Here's a Pen BBS 308, which I think is a perfect size pen for everyday use. And here's a, a Lamy All Star. Let's pop the caps, post them, and see how they compare then. So in posting, as we would expect, the 78G is the smallest pen of this group, with the 308 being next, but still a good size. The Lamy Safari is very long posted, but the uh, Fuluin 815 holds its own in the length department. Let's look at these sections, which are all completely different, but just to put things in perspective. I mean, these are all different nibs, all different sizes, so you run the gambit here. Even though this section's a little on the small side, it's a little bit bigger diameter than a 78G section, and the, the Pen BBS 308 to me is almost like a perfect size section. And as we bring into the camera frame, the Lamy Safari is an animal unto itself. So just these are there, there, like I said, for comparison's sake. So what ink to put in it. This was a no-brainer. I fell in love with this ink when I first wrote with it. Flow's great, color is great. Interesting bottle. I'll explore a little bit about what that means. The color card shows it to be a really nice blue. And I enjoy a good blue. The chromatography basically shows it's blue. That's kind of what you want. And no water resistance. So we're now ready for that all-important how does it write part of the video. One of the things to me is people sometimes say that pens aren't unique enough. People don't do enough unique design. Too many designs are copied. Well, here's a pen that I think is about as unique as they get. And it's made very, very well. And the components all fit together well. I think aesthetically, it's extremely well balanced. But in the scheme of things, they probably will sell very few of these pens. Whereas a pen that might mimic or might look similar to another pen, they'll probably sell much more of that type of pen. So we, the buying public, have an extreme influence because these pens are made to be sold and made to be bought. And if they're not, then the manufacturer decides that they're not going to make any more like that. And since there's only a few of these for sale on eBay, it looks like it's going to go down that route of not many available, and when they're gone, they're gone. Functional pull-off cap, as I mentioned, and it pulls off with quite a force. It's lengthwise without posting is okay. It's relatively light. We'll give you those weights. It does post securely with a snap, and I think that's because of that plastic liner inside the cap, which catches on that little ridge that's both on the section here and the bottom of the barrel or top of the barrel based on this orientation. And posted, it still feels fine balance-wise. The cap is not that heavy. But for this writing test, I'm going to write with it unposted, partly because the long length of the pen will hit the tripod. This section's a pretty much on the small side, uh, certainly smaller than I like or appreciate or, or 
enjoy and we'll give you those dimensions of that section it's also relatively short and normally I'd be holding it up here which is where that step up is but it's not sharp it doesn't intrude it actually gives you a fairly decent place to hold and we'll give you that di diameter here of the barrel which is okay that's a nice diameter and there you can see the nib is about the right distance from the paper so let's see how that hyacinth macaw ink works Hopefully you could hear as I had the mic next to the nib. This is super smooth. Requires no pressure whatsoever to write. It's very forgiving nib. You can, you're not going to be limited to one angle of writing. And I think the ink flow is great, but then this ink seems to flow very well. So I'm impressed with this nib. It, it is certainly not what I expected from looking at it. It's not soft, but it's also not a nail. So you get a little bit of feedback from it from pressure, but it's still, it kind of like bounces just a little bit, which is what I like. But it's the first nib in a while I've had that is very independent of pressure and angle. So that makes it a, a nice nib for people that tend to rotate their pens or tend to write with a not perfect orientation of the pen. So we're going to rate this pen. I have to give it a 9.4. I mean, and it gets two checks for the nib because that just is a great nib. And I also think it gets two checks for the way that it looks, engineering, balance, manufacturing, so it's okay ergonomics in that section and that step i mean it's not the most ergonomic pen but once you get into holding it where i'm holding it now it it feels good it, it writes well this could make a, a great everyday carry pen so that's it so hopefully you've enjoyed this look at a retro pen Thank you for watching. And hopefully you're surviving as well as can be expected in the current worldwide crisis that is upon us. Uh, my view is we're in a tunnel. There's a faint light at the end. Sometimes it gets dimmer, but Eventually, we'll be through the tunnel and we'll be back into the light. And uh, there may be a different world out there when we finally get out of this tunnel, but that's the way life is. Life is constantly changing around us, and, and we're also changing. So please be uh, safe, stay healthy, and continue to enjoy your life as much as you can. And find a great pen to write with. Find some great ink like I've done here. And uh, hopefully that will bring some joy. So we're going to say bye for now. I just enjoy writing with this pen. Something I did not expect when I first got it. <laughs>